The reason I haven't moved is because I didn't leave the Labour Party to join another party. I left the Labour Party to shine a spotlight on the disgrace it's become under his leadership, under his leadership, and because I regard myself as proper, decent, traditional Labour, not like the extremists who've taken over this party and are dragging it into the mud. I only ever wanted to be the Labour MP for Dudley. But I've got to be honest with people, I think I could never ask people in Dudley to make Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister. That's why I left the Labour Party earlier this year. I grew up in Dudley, I learnt important values. Fairness, playing by the rules, what's right and what's wrong. Basic, decent British values. And I think the truth is that I think that Jeremy Corbyn is completely unfit to lead the Labour Party and certainly unfit to lead our country. I'm not going to run at this election. The country faces a big choice. There's only two people who can be Prime Minister on December the 13th, Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson. And I think Jeremy Corbyn is completely unfit to lead our country, completely unfit to lead the Labour Party. You know, I joined the Labour Party as a teenager in Dudley. I was a councillor there in my 20s. I worked for the party and for the Labour government in my 30s and I became an MP and a government minister in my 40s. So this has been my life. This has been my life. I can't really believe it's come to this, but I've got to be honest with people. I think that Jeremy Corbyn is unfit to lead the Labour Party. I think he's certainly unfit to lead the country. And after 34 years of... I joined the Labour Party as a teenager. I worked for the Labour Party. You know, in my 30s, I was a government advisor. In my 40s, I was an MP and a, and a minister. But So it's really come to something when I tell decent, traditional, patriotic Labour voters that they should be voting for Boris Johnson at this election. I can't believe it's come to this, but that's where we are. You, someone who, let's be honest, used to pick up the phone to this programme and have the odd shout occasionally when you were Gordon Brown's press secretary. Let's be clear, you are telling people yeah, I am. to vote Conservative, mm -hmm. to vote for Boris Johnson. I am. I think this is the choice the country faces. The British people are going to have... Look, the public's got to make this choice. You know, the British people have got to decide this. Lots of Labour voters, traditional, decent Labour voters, are going to be grappling with this question. And if they've got to face up to that, then I don't think people like me should have the luxury of running away from it. Look, I could, you know, just announce I'm standing down, disappear off back to Dudley, you'll never hear from me again. But in the end, I think people have put themselves forward for elected office, positions in politics. You've got a responsibility to stand up, tell the truth, do what's right. If a political party has caused such huge offence and distress to one of Britain's communities, whose side do you want? Whose side do you want? When it comes to racism, I know what my responsibility is. This is a basic question of what's right and what's wrong. I think this is a really fundamental issue. And if you're not going to stand up and tell the truth and do what's right on something like racism, what are you going to do it on? What are you going to do it on? Do you think that's why Tom Watson's standing down? <sighs> I mean, look, I talked to t Tom's a good guy. You know, he's a good friend of mine. I talk to him all the time. I think this, you know, I mean, look, if Tom thought Jeremy Corbyn was fit to be Prime Minister, and if he thought there was a prospect of a... <laughs> I mean, if he thought he could be in a Labour cabinet as a number two in a few weeks, would he be doing this? I'm standing down because I think this is a this election in the end is a really clear choice between Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson. And I want to encourage people to vote for Boris Johnson to ensure that Jeremy Corbyn never gets anywhere near number ten. I joined the Labour Party as a teenager. I've been a local councillor. I've worked for the party. I was a, an advisor to the last Labour government. I've been a Member of Parliament for 14 years, I was a Government Minister, so for the Labour Party has been my life. And for me to do something like this, you know, this is a massive step, it's a big question for me. But uh, this is the choice the British people are going to have to make. And um, I just think that Jeremy Corbyn is unfit to lead Britain. He and the people around him always seem to back our country's enemies, whether that was supporting the IRA at the height of the Troubles, or describing Hamas and Hezbollah as his friends, or when Putin sends hitmen to murder people in the streets of Britain, Jeremy Corbyn parrots the Kremlin line. I think this is completely unacceptable. I don't think he loves our country in the end. Uh, I think their economic policies would deter investment, uh, put businesses and jobs at risk, and I think their Brexit policy is completely ridiculous. I regard myself as decent, traditional, mainstream, patriotic Labour. And I think decent Labour voters, mainstream Labour voters, 
should lend the Tories their vote at this election. I mean, I joined the Labour Party as a teenager to fight racism, and I can't believe that I had to leave it to fight racism as well. And I think what's happened to the Labour Party is absolutely heartbreaking. I think it is... I don't think people could have believed. I mean, look, I think under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, they've taken what was a mainstream political party and they've turned it into something completely different, way out on the fringes of British politics. I think Jeremy Corbyn, John McDonnell, people like this, have spent their entire time on the fringes of British politics. I think their views are completely at odds with the, the mainstream of the British people. And I think it makes them completely unfit to lead our country. It would have been easy, you know, to sort of ignore this question. But I think in politics you've got to face up to the difficult choices. And you've got to tell the truth. And you've got to stand up for what's right. And if you're not in politics, to tell the truth and stand up for what's right, on fundamental issues like racism. What are you in it for? We're in a situation here where only 6% of Jewish people in Britain would consider voting Labour. Where, um, where almost 9 out of 10 of Britain's Jews think there's a, a problem with anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. I mean, that is absolutely shameful. Absolutely shameful. And I think it, you know, I think under his leadership, racism has poisoned a political party that had a fine and proud tradition of standing up for equality and fighting racism, I think it's a complete disgrace. The Labour Party's been my life, you know, but the damage has been done. The damage has been done. This party under Jeremy Corbyn is unfit to lead the country. And certainly, I want to do everything I can to stop Jeremy Corbyn getting into number 10. I'll do this with a really heavy heart. <laughs> it's the most awful thing. And there are friends of mine, you know, who will feel betrayed. Good friends of mine who are standing as Labour candidates are going to feel betrayed and upset. But in politics, you know, you've got to face up to tough decisions and you've got to do what you think is right. And the country faces a choice. And this, by the way, this has happened on our watch, right? We have a responsibility for this. I could say something to do with me and walk away from it all. But in the end, we've allowed this to happen in the Labour Party. And we've got to take responsibility for it. And I do not want him to do to the country what I think he's done to the Labour Party. You've described him as poisonous. Yeah, I think he's poisoned. I think the Labour Party has been poisoned with extremism, intolerance and anti-Semitism under his leadership. Why not stay and fight? You know, what does it mean for centrist members of the party who have rallied uh, behind you uh, when you were there and behind Tom Watson and now they're seeing you um, jumping ship and, and they're left behind? Well, look, I didn't leave the Labour Party to join another party. I didn't do that in February. I left to shine a spotlight on what's happening in the party and to demand other people step up and do something about it. And I've been fighting about this and arguing about this. I haven't... Well, people said to me, Ian, you've got to stay and fight. I said, where's the fight? You know, you want me to stay and fight, you better start fighting. I mean, I didn't walk away from this fight. And I'm not going to uh, sort of... I've formed a new organisation. It's not a political party. It's a cross-party thing, and it involves people from outside politics. It's mainstreamuk.org, and that's a campaign against extremism on the far left and the hard right. And we're going to be standing up for decent, mainstream, responsible values in British politics. And I'm going to be working with that and doing everything I can to sort of rid politics of extremism and racism. What would you say to other members of the Labour Party and other Labour MPs? Well, look, friends of mine, I'm really sorry about this, you know. I know how every feeling, I know how furious and angry they'll be. They're fighting elections, I know how tough that is. You're out on doorsteps and trying to persuade people and you've got me doing this, I mean, you know. But in the end... In the end, I think Jeremy Corbyn's unfit to be our Prime Minister. I think it's a really important election. And I think voting for anybody other than Jeremy Corbyn risks that happening, you know? Um, and how comfortably does it sit with you finally in um, campaigning, which is what you're doing, campaigning for the Conservatives? I mean, look, you know, I'm not a Conservative. This isn't where I wanted to be. It's the last thing I thought could have happened. I spent my life in the Labour Party. They're going to be lifelong friends of mine who probably never speak to me. After the, I look, I mean, you know, it's not about me, this, right? You're clearly upset, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, you know, it's a massive thing. It's a massive thing, Kay. I could not have believed it would have come to this. You seem quite broken by it. Well, you know, it's heartbreaking. I think what's happened to the late party's heartbreaking, I'll be honest about it. You know, I think it's a disaster. I think it's a disaster for the late party, and it's a disaster for our country. And it's a really difficult choice. But decent, mainstream, patriotic Labour voters They've got to ask themselves whether Jeremy Corbyn, who supported terrorism, supported extremism, 
backs our country's enemies, whether he can be trusted to lead it. And I just don't think he can. I just don't think he can. And whatever... My de- Look, I'm not talking about pride. I disagree with loads of things the Conservative government's done. Of course I do. But in the end, I wouldn't say that they're in fit to run the country. I wouldn't say that. And I do think Jeremy Corbyn is. And I've got to be honest about it. I've got to be honest about it. There we are. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right.